Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Enter the Ether, the podcast all about the upcoming third-person MOBA ethereal Clash of Souls. I am your host, the Mangus. Joining me always is my friend and co-host, Jelly Knees. How you doing, Jelly? I love that I looked down right as your eyes got wide. Perfect timing. <laughs> like, it was great. I'm doing fantastic. Other than my voice still sounding terrible, I'm great. So <laughs> I think your voice sounds good. I think you got a bit of a Daniel Hodge thing going on with your voice all week. Perfect. Then I'm just going to stay like this forever. I'm never getting better. <laughs> so there was a... Um... attract the ladies. I'll, I'm in. <laughs> Man, I bet he does attract the ladies. Just <laughs> idly talking in a restaurant. But I can only talk to them on the phone. I can be like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> And if I get better, then I can never talk to them again because I can't have them know. <laughs> the only while I'm sick thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. Uh, just walk around trying to get people to sneeze in your face. <laughs> <laughs> Sticking my head in the freezer trying to stay <laughs> sick. Yeah, absolutely. So UG had a pretty big announcement this week. Jelly, what was that all about? So UG officially announced that we are bringing on significantly more testers than we have currently. Um, in the internal testing up till now, we've had about 20 people in pretty consistently going through in varying states. Uh, but we want to ramp up testing. We want to get more people in, get feedback on stuff. So we put it out to the community at large, right? Because that's what the community's there for. We're an early, we're an indie developer with a title that's never been done before, right? We're going to need extensive testing. We're going to need extensive feedback. So we want to do that and honor the community with that. So we put out an announcement asking for testers, fill out a questionnaire, kind of all those good things, and then are already going through the list, setting up interviews as well. So we're moving along, trying to get this on the road. Right on. So uh, just to put it out there for everybody, how can people go about trying to be a tester for Ethereal? Yeah, so go to our Discord page, look in the announcements. There's a link there that takes you to our website. It's got a Google form embedded on it. Fill out the Google form, make sure you read everything, I'll say that again. Make sure you read everything um, <laughs> and fill it out to the best of your ability. As much detail as you can provide, that's better for us because that gives us a better perspective of who you are as a tester. Then if we like your your little application, we'll reach out to you, schedule an interview. After the interview, we'll let you know either if we want you to be in the testing group or maybe not right now, we might bring you into the future or what the next step is. And then we'll go from there and get you into testing. Right on. Uh, so that's that's really awesome. I know a lot of people have been chomping at the bit to play this game, and this will give them an opportunity to do so. But it's not for everybody. Testing is not for everybody, and that's what we're going to kind of discuss today. We're going to talk about what we would like to see for testers in Ethereal. And by the way, if you don't have the Ethereal Discord and you're watching the video, I'll have it linked in the video description below or Jelly, whoever's whoever this is, whoever's channel this is going on this week. I, I don't even know. But uh, yeah, you can check that out, and then um, yeah, so that's that's what we're going to talk about this week. And I, I mainly think that you guys need to be looking for a like a large variety of different types of testers. I think that's the main thing you guys need to be looking for. I mean, not just willingness to to you know bug test and all that, but people that are like really really good at games and like. Are, are demonstrably so but also people that are just kind of casual and just want to play the mm -hmm. game like when they have free time like that's the kind of testers that i think the, the sort of spectrum we need what do you think jelly yeah i completely agree with you it's one of those because the game is as big as it is in terms of like the complexity right having an extra ability having the class ability having the different classes in general having three separated lanes right you're gonna want or we want as much perspective as possible on all of those. So from a high level point, from a low level point, from a brand new player, we want to understand where the pitfalls are in every step of the way. Right. So we can go about fixing those or changing them to make them feel better, more accessible, etc. Just hearing different voices. Exactly. And getting better feedback that way, yeah. One thing, when, when you... When, uh, you, you brought this topic up that, that we we're going to be talking about this week. And the one thing that my mind always goes to when you talk about like kinds of testers and stuff is when people start talking about top down balancing there, I have a lot of problems with that. I do think that you do need to balance top down. Like 
you need to balance from the highest skill level down. Like the game needs to be balanced for that high skill level mm -hmm. because most people, while they may not play a lot, they get it. Like mm -hmm. if you design a really complicated character, there's people out there, casual players, they'll get it. They'll understand how to play it. They may not be a top player because they don't play that character enough to know everything, but they'll still get what you're talking about. So I think top down balancing is the way to go. However, I think people get stuck in that top down balancing and not, and they don't realize that the vast majority of the player base are going to be casual players. So you still do need to get the, the casual players input and you do need to still have some heroes that people could just pick up and play. Absolutely. So that's, I mean, that's a big thing we've talked about before, Mangoose, is the pre-Alpha 7 being pretty much all accessible characters to everybody, right? There's elements of them that for a really high skill player, skill level player, they can really love like Talos or Noxus by comparison, right? But then there's also Malaya, who is really as simple as holding left click most of the time and running at people, right? So it's the characters themselves are going to have some of that in the pre-alpha, but we also wanted them to have that that feeling where you could pick it up and play and the skill ceiling is very high mm -hmm. so that everybody can feel like even with malaya right yes you hold left click and run it down but do you press your shield before you dash in or do you dash first and press your shield like there there's little nuances you can get when the time well. your ultimate correctly and stuff like that yeah exactly and i think something i've been a part of discussions internally is trying to keep that skill ceiling as high as possible mm -hmm. while also bringing up the skill base so that everybody feels like they're doing the cool things. Yeah. Right. It, it's not, so it, it's definitely a balancing act you have to find. And that's having more testers is definitely going to help us do so because there's never, we're never going to see everything. Right. The, one of the greatest things is that Talos gameplay video coming out and people saying like, these are the things we have the biggest issues with. Right. Let's fix those first. Like that's yeah. that's an easy thing. It's not necessarily we didn't recognize those were an issues, but we didn't realize how prevalent the community thought about them. So just getting more names and voices in the mix is going to be super beneficial for the game. Right. And hopefully the people that you're getting are going to be very open minded and um willing to um always uh, one thing I always say, you can't always do this, but you should always try to have a solution whenever you present a problem. I would like to see those people coming up with their own solutions to the problems that they see like this is wrong but i think this is how you can fix it maybe that's not the way ug will fix the problem but i think people getting into that mindset will be very helpful to ug down the road yeah. that's what kind of people and hope you get absolutely and there, there's definitely an extent there's a balancing act in there as well right because with the amount of testers we're hoping to bring on it's going to be hard for the handful of UG members to have conversa in-depth conversations with every person right. about some of that stuff. So we love hearing solutions because we'll look at it and be like, is that something, A, we want for the game? Like, is that a road we want to take for the game? And then if it is, is that the fix we want to implement or do we want to go a different route? Um, it's hard sometimes because we want to extend those conversations with the people, but time is time, right? right. It, it's never fleeting. So sometimes we see those solutions and it's hard because they feel like they've gone ignored. I promise you guys, we look at solutions <laughs> all the time. If somebody's like, could you fix it this way? I guarantee you we have a conversation about it of like, is that something we want to do? Will it fix the problem? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, but having solutions is a great thing because there have been times where somebody poses a solution and we go, that's perfect. We don't, we like that. No big deal. Implement it the next day. Good to go. Right. And it, take some of the work off of us as well, because we don't have to try and think of a solution in that process as well. We can focus right. on some of the other ones that are issues. Um, I think again, with the whole spectrum of different types of players, I think you also need a spectrum of testers. Like you need the people that are going to try to play the game at the highest level and try and build the best they can. But you also need that guy that's, and you know you're going to have plenty of them that are like, what happens if I dash backwards into this tree while uh, while using this ability? Oh, let me try and dash backwards into the same tree while using this ability. And they're just going to do that the whole time. And that's that's going to be great for you guys to figure out a lot of stuff. Because I'm sure there's stuff out there that, like, God, I forget the guy's name. Pusey. 
Pusey, when, whenever I was, uh, he was um, playing Revenblade with me when he was testing out, that dude would find the craziest ways to get on top of stuff. He was finding invisible islands in the middle of nothing. Like, who finds that stuff? Like, how did, mm -hmm. who dashes to that particular point on the map and finds that there's like a centimeter of surface area that you can stand and then shoot people from, you know? You, you're going to need people like that. Absolutely. And when there's, well. one, there's been a couple instances in testing already where we're doing something and I had when I chased a guy down and he jumped off a fire lane on the far side. He's not landing anywhere. He's just going to die. Mm -hmm. It's like, cool, no problem, right? Go to turn back. But I never get the like confirmed death thing on the banner. And I sat there for a moment. And so I go over and I look over the edge and he found a teeny tiny spot <laughs> that he can jump off and <laughs> land perfectly and survive. And he was playing Malaya, so he, then he tried to dash back up. And I was like, how did you find this? What? <laughs> what is this? And like, he knew it was there, too. Like, he knew oh, it was there. It was so calculated. Like, he just full <laughs> speed jumped off the edge. Oh, man. But it was uh, absolutely. Then the next test, we we're like, that's fixed. Don't do. Nope. You can't do that anymore. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I want to see it like um, Overprime with their Pac-Man rules with their portal i want to see if you jump off fire lane you land on ice lane <laughs> like but if you jump off ice lane you land on fire lane oh my gosh dude it's insane sometimes <laughs> oh but yeah the other thing we're doing in addition to like a wide variety of testers themselves in terms of like play style and skill level is this is also an opportunity for us to test different computer specifications as well, oh yes and where where the thresholds of the game are at currently right now because it's so early in development and has not been fully optimized by any means. Um, but so we're trying to see where the thresholds are, how we can improve those thresholds. The majority of our testers right now have NVIDIA GPUs. So AMD GPUs could have completely different results that we're not expecting or not aware of at the moment. So that's right. another thing we're taking into account with adding all these testers is does their computer specifications also meet something we need to test at the same time? I didn't even think of that, but yeah, that's 100%. Yeah, if you guys get data on that, that'd be great. So yeah, if you guys are out there and you've been thinking about testing, you're thinking that your computer isn't up to snuff, if it's half decent, then you know, give it a try, and then they'll get data back. Maybe you'll be able to play the game, maybe you won't, but at least you will have helped out. And it's one of those things that it's we're probably going to have a ever-expanding list of testers to some extent, right? So we may... And I'm just pulling a random GPU out of my butt here. But let's say the cutoff is that a we have a GTX 770 mm -hmm. as the lowest GPU. Once we can optimize better and once we know that that is running smoothly, maybe if you have a 570, we then expand testing down to you to then bring you into that and see how it feels and how it tests and all of those things. Right. Right. It's something that we can ever expand into different areas as we see fit. And that's kind of how our questionnaire was designed as well is to give us the perspectives of what are we looking for right now for testers? And then we can also look at things and be like, okay, this is a good group for when we expand to this thing. This is a good group we can bring in at that time and, and go from there. Yeah. Uh, what about times? Do you have like specific times that you'd be able to do the test? And are you looking specifically for NA or are you guys looking to test EU? Eventually, we want to expand to other regions. Right now, we're yeah. only in the U.S., um, and that's for legal reasons. That Because of the NDAs and everything involved, mm -hmm. we need to operate inside the U.S., and everyone has to be over 18. Um, but going forward, we want to expand in other regions, and then the times as well are going to depend. Right now, we've kind of got set times for testing, but as things change, that may develop into we'll have two separate testing times or people earlier in the day versus people later in the day and all right. of those kind of things as well. Okay, yeah, that'd be good. That'd be really good. Good to see. Yeah, I imagine with uh, a lot more testers and then y'all going to be busy though. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely like, we're going to be busy, that's which gonna, is a good gonna thing. It's going to wind right? up like, for you guys a lot. Exactly. And that's what we're hoping for. We've kind of hit a point where the game is in such a place that we can start branching out to these testers and having more of these opportunities available. Because we're ever approaching that that further release and the further mm -hmm. community at large playing the game. So as many opinions as we can get before then, and feedback and balancing and all that, the better that release is going to be. 
Yeah. I, I'm something glad you guys else. are doing a lot of testing now, too, before. Mm -hmm. before and something else like we really want to do is expand our testing to multiple games at once. Because it's all well and good to run the game in, in run one game with 12 people and have it run flawlessly. But when you're running eight games, 10 games, 15 games, all at the same time, that is also going to be slightly different and seeing how that interaction happens and, and in the client, how it all works and all of yeah. those things are definitely add up. Do some early testing with MMR as far as like finding matches and stuff like that. Maybe not like ELO or anything, but like MMR and ELO, like matchmaking is a little different than just ELO. Mm -hmm. But just, just matchmaking so that you can find a game. If you guys get that down pat, that would be a huge step in the right direction. Yeah. Um, I can say actually that we've already been doing some testing. We've pulled some of our test Oh, you're cutting out on me. We have fully functional matchmaking that we can get 12 people into a lobby, character select, and load into a game. We've done that recently. That happened a couple weeks ago. Um, we've got custom games. We've run, I think it was eight games at once, all off the client. We've run, like, we're, we're slowly making strides in, toward that end of all of these different milestones for a new game to come out, a new multiplayer game, especially. Nice. That was a big moment for us internally, yeah. like running multiple games. It was like, <laughs> we did it. Like, this is a thing that's <laughs> happening right now. Super cool. Super cool. That is awesome. I, I need to get back into testing. I haven't tested in quite a while. Yeah, we miss you, Mangoose. I always forget about it. People are going to wow. be so angry. People are going to wow, be so angry man, Goose forgets about us. You guys heard it here first. <laughs> I'm always busy doing things, stuff and things. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He just doesn't <laughs> want to lose to me, guys. It's okay. I understand. I do get tired of losing the jelly. I will admit to that. <laughs> I, I, at this point, all the testers are tired of it, though. So <laughs> I got told I got told I'm not allowed to play Malaya anymore. I'm too good. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Bad days. <laughs> oh, well. It is what it is. No, it's fine. Uh, but once we have a testers in there, I'm so excited to have to be able to jump between games. At how are things going here? What like what anything going on? What's the deal? Because with more testers, we're going to start having the UG team back out a little bit more. Yeah. And really have the testers be involved as a whole. Right. And so we've got lead testers that are going to kind of help facilitate for new people. Um, people that know the game really well inside and out that can help explain and we've got the UG team kind of above that as well that can help facilitate crashes and bugs and things like that as well. Right on. Sounds like you guys got a good system set up. Yeah. I'm sure you Overall, have a system I'm... of bug reporting and everything already oh, set yeah. up and good to go. You know, this it's... is exciting stuff. This is exciting stuff. The community is finally going to get a lot more of the community is finally going to get their hands on Ethereal. Yep. And it's going to be, it only scales up from here, right? Yeah. We don't, we don't do this testing and then suddenly be like, okay, and disappear right it's <laughs> it only we're, we're scaling up for a reason we're getting to these milestones we're getting to these thresholds where that these are the next steps for us right to on. go through and get a lot of this done cool beans man and special stuff is coming in the future who knows i can't <laughs> say for sure but stuff is happening eventually oh what happened um i don't know if you can even answer this what happened with the um the mocap suit did you guys ever get that uh as far as i know it's still in shipment um, I haven't heard much past that. It's not okay. my, we've got a mocap department that's handling that. But so I, I will look into that and then have an answer for you next week that we can go over as well. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm really excited to see some better animations in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that'll really set it apart. Something, uh, something you mentioned earlier too, doing cool shit. I was thinking about that the other day too. I've been doing a lot of hiking and when I'm hiking, I think about shit a lot. I was yeah. thinking about what makes games fun. And mm -hmm. I think just being able to do cool shit is what makes games fun for me. Like, that's kind of like why I don't like like Call of Duty and like Fortnite and stuff like that. There's not a lot of opportunity for me, at least, to do cool shit. Like mm -hmm. with Richter, I can snatch a Gideon out of the air while he's doing his ultimate. That's fucking cool. That's cool as shit. It, like especially if I planned it, like I'm, I'm gonna save my hook until that Gideon does this, and then snatch him out of the air. There's so much potential to do cool shit in Ethereal, and I can't wait till all these testers get in there and do all kinds of cool shit because they're gonna have so much fun. Like even if the animations aren't there, 
you're still going to be able to do cool shit with the with the heroes, and I think that's the ultimate measure of how popular a game is going to be. Absolutely, I I completely agree with you. And the the cool thing is that with only seven characters, you already have that feeling. Yeah, right? it's not like even though we're saying that these are really accessible characters, even though we're saying that these are the characters that everybody can kind of pick up and play, you still have that feeling already. So then when you expand that out to some of the people that we have planned, when we get our own fat hooker, as you've said in the past, <laughs> Andrews, right? The, 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 it only goes up from there, right? It only exponentially increases as we can do cooler and cooler things with new heroes and all yeah. of that. Right on. I mean, the other day in testing, we had, and uh, we've, we've been testing uh, several times a week for several months now, right? So you'd feel like even, especially with only seven characters, you've kind of, you've probably have seen it all. To, to an extent. The other day, something happened with uh, a Noxus was playing, got her passive off, and killed five people with just her passive. <laughs> and, it, and all of us were like, that was the coolest thing I've seen a Noxus do <laughs> thus far. No question. Because she just landed everything perfectly, went down, and then her passive just did the last hit on five people. It was that incredible. awesome. Right? And it I was... The Noxus felt cool. We all felt cool watching it. Yeah. Even the people that died were like mad oh, respect. That was because cool. <laughs> I deserved that one. Like that, that's a cool moment when even the yeah. people that die can recognize that like you did work there. That's a cool thing. And right? I was, and that, and that's I, what gets me excited. I have done that with Noxus, not to five people, but I got one person like that. I think it was you actually. <laughs> I think it was me. <laughs> <laughs> and it felt fucking cool. I was like, yeah. that's what everybody was talking about. Like, you know, if your passive's up, then just go all in. And if even if they kill you, you can still take them out with the passive. And just being able to do that, like, plan that out in your head and then actually execute it in the game. So much fun. Yeah. And it's one of those, at, by association, the flip side of that, right? Doing cool stuff is really fun and exciting for players. But also, knowing when someone else can do cool stuff to you is also terrifying in, like, a fun way. <laughs> yeah. Lack of a better way to put it. Noxus passive being the prime example, right? I'm fighting a Noxus and I ask my team, is her passive up? We don't know. So I'm going in blind, going like, I hope to God that something <laughs> is not about to go wrong here. Right? I see that first explosion come off and I'm booking it, trying to get out of there before I die. Like it just adds so much excitement to the game overall, even in those tense moments where you might die because you made a greedy play or something. Right. Well, I think COS now stands for cool shit instead of Clash of Souls. <laughs> <laughs> or cool stuff exactly. if we want to be PG about it. <laughs> yeah, man. Come on. God. God. All right. I think that's about all I had for this week. Do you have anything else? I think that's it for me as well. Just I'm excited to get testers in. Um, we're interviewing all throughout this next week. We've already got like 30 interviews set or something ridiculous. Nice. So it's we're, a lot of us are going to be real busy talking to people, getting <laughs> feels for all how all that kind of stuff. So we're excited overall. We're excited to get everybody into the game. And, you know, exciting announcements coming soon. So all that good stuff, man. Right on. Uh, you have anything to plug? Uh, Ethereal Clash of Souls. And if you have the announcements channel in, in the Ecos Discord muted, you should probably unmute it. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say from there. <laughs> right on. Uh, so be on the lookout, guys, apparently. <laughs> I got nothing to plug this week, so I think that's going to close it out. But yeah, if, you, if you're interested in being a tester, if you're willing to put in the time, if you're willing to put in a little bit of writing to actually express what these bugs are and do a little bit of recording to maybe record photos of what happened with the bug and just be able to try and reproduce. If you're willing to put some work into Ethereal, then I hope you will join us as we test Ethereal Clash of Souls. <laughs> Mango! Shout out to channel members Foolish Blood Hunter, Jelly Knees, and Ferret. 